Yo, what it do, ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy B. Welcome back to Paranormal Sight. The Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. Now, this time, unlike the last episode that I literally just recorded yesterday, or earlier this morning at night, I'm actually using the Elgato, because for some reason, I was able to get it to work. I, I still don't really understand fully how I got it to work, but after doing some tinkering and realizing, oh, hey, the thing's not in the USB 3.0 uh, slot in my laptop. I put it in there, and then I looked up some things again, and then I realized that's a USB 2.0 USB that came with the capture card. Why does it need a USB 3.0 slot? But then magically after opening and closing the 4K capture utility, which I don't even need because I don't have a 4K monitor, it just started working. Randomly it showed up on the actual 4K capture utility itself. And I was like, oh, okay, but I don't see the screen. And then I went ahead and took off the source of OBS and put the source back on OBS. And then boom, it started working. Like it showed the screen and everything. And then the sound started working. I was like, what the fuck? And then it closed the 4K capture utility on itself. I didn't even do that. But now it's working. And the wild thing is, it's showing on my TV and on the PC with literally little to no latency issues. Like it's almost like it's one to one showing what it's showing on TV and on the computer, which is wild to me. I've never had this before. So this is new territory. Uh, let me know how the sound is too. I'm looking at how it is on my uh, on OBS and it seems like the audio is, even though I put it to five, no, minus 5.2 decibels, it looks like it's getting closer and closer to the red. Which is crazy to me because the other capture card that we use, the one that's like a $25 one, the audio was not as own, I guess. So I don't know if that, I don't know if it really makes a difference or if I'm just overthinking things. But anyways, let's go ahead and continue from where we left off because last time we went back into Shogo and we went through the rest of his story. And eventually after going on a murderous rampage, for just to try to save this girl who we barely even know um we died <laughs> we died before we even had the chance to even try to attempt to save her because our own uh our, our own mystery which is uh what was it again my brain it was the whispering canal ended up being used on us somehow after we literally grabbed it and then it decided I, I don't know why it ended our life but you know what it's okay let's uh we, we unlock this the structure that you have more than likely seen from games like 999 and um uh ai the somnium files and stuff like that you know but it has the structure of the story events and all that shit but anyways enough talk let's get into this so it says to restart or resume part two. So Kinshibori Park part two, Shogo Okie. Summary of previous events. Shogo Okie is with Yoko Fukunaga at Kinshibori Park, searching for one of the seven mysteries of Honjo. His interest in the occult starts to grow as he learns more about it from Yoko. So if we resume, what happens? Oh, 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 oh. Um. Let's do something's happening to Yoko. Whoa. What the hell? It feels like the air just changed. Oh, this is going to be different because now I'm going to be able to see what happens in real time when I, uh, instead of the delay, like I have with the other capture card and now it's going to scream. It's going to freak me out even more. Aye. that has got Yoko really rattled. I feel eyes on my back. I can't move. So we already saw this part, right? Yoko, are you okay? Ah, ah, ah! Hey, what's wrong? Stay with me. No, this, this can't be. No, no. Ah, ah! Ah, ah! Why? Ah! Ah! <laughs> Yoko! Yoko! It's no use. She's in no condition to talk. 
keep yelling her name. Oh. Huh? What? Is calling her name really going to help? I'm already yelling as hard as I can. Shouldn't I look for what's causing this? Oh, this is us talking to him. Okay, I get it. There's nothing there. Yoko, hang in there, Yoko. Look at me. You're going to be okay. It's all right. There's nothing there. Ah! 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 Yoko! Oh, I did it. Okay, brand new chapter. Kinchibori Park Part 3. Summary of previous events. Shogo cries Yoko's name in a desperate attempt to wake her as she lies, unmoving, on the ground. Will this please get through to her? Well, let's see. Shogo Okie. I'm pretty sure nothing changed, no? Well, was that one spirit there? Because I didn't look for it. Because it showed up after... It showed up after she died before, so I don't know. Hmm. Hello, sleepyhead. Huh? Oh, good. You're awake. What? I, um... Also, sorry, I, I realize I might have been a bit too close to the mic there. So I apologize if my voice was way too loud in the beginning. That is my fault. I don't know why I decided to start in, like, like, hunched over like this. I need to be proper. No gamer back today. No, it's too early. It's only 1230. Too early. Are you okay? You were so rattled and confused. I thought you'd really lost it. Do you feel dizzy? Have a headache? Are your humor self balanced? Wait, what did you say? I think I've heard that before. Yeah, you said it to me. You're the one who said it earlier. Oh, right. That must have been it. My humors were off balance. What does that even mean? What, back there? You ended up like that because of your humors? Yeah, I've heard that at this age, your humors being even a little bit off can be fatal. What does that even mean, humors? Hmm. I'm glad you're back to normal now. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cause you so much trouble. Was that her trying to kill us? Because you know how she has the Whispering Canal. Was she trying to do, the, do that in a way where we would turn around? And she would kill us? Or am I tripping? I don't know. But I really don't remember what happened. Hmm. Sounds like what happened to me. Maybe this place is dangerous somehow. What? Are you backing out? Yeah, it just doesn't feel safe to me. And I'm worried about you. Let's call off today's investigation. Come on! I what the fuck? Alright, I'll be right back. I didn't... Someone at the door? Alright, I'm back. Sorry about taking a while. I, um... After I went out to... I don't even remember what the hell I did before. Oh, there was a package at the door. That's right. So after I got the package, I went ahead and moved the trash can. And looking inside the trash can, uh, it needed to be cleaned. So I cleaned that. That's why it's been a little bit... Uh, uh, that's why it took a while for me to come back. Sorry about that. Anyway. Come on! I just started feeling back to normal, too. Nope. Not happening. Go home. I'll even pay your cab fare, okay? I ended up having to force a still protesting Yoko into a taxi. Even then, she still wouldn't stop complaining. So to placate her, I promised I'd search the park on my own for a little while longer. Oh! Wait, this is like far in the future. So this is past these events, I guess, on the timeline. Inshibori Park Part 4. Shoko Okie. Worried about Yoko after a bizarre incident, Shoko decides to call off their investigation into the mysteries for tonight. Despite her stubborn objections, he managed to persuade her by offering to continue the search on his own. Oh. Shogo Okie, 5 a.m. Oh, wait. Yeah, why this music? Yeah, 
In further news, <clears throat> and for oh my god, he's dead! <laughs> he's dead! Before dawn today, a police officer on patrol discovered a man collapsed in the Sumida Park, Sumida City Park. Why is he dead? Why is his neck bent? The man was taken to the hospital, but his death was confirmed shortly after. Investigations are still underway, but police suspect a connection to the other unexplained deaths found in the area at around the same time. Wait, so it was... Wait. Wait, what? He drowned. Oh, and now the title card. <laughs> this very normal sight, the seven mysteries of Honjo. Okay, I see. So... So somehow... His own curse killed him. Right? Because I believe at that point we picked it up, no? No, no, we didn't. That's right. No. Yoko still had it. Wait, so she killed us? Huh? She still has the Wondering Canal, yeah? Or Whispering Canal? So how the... What? Okay. You've got some explaining to do. Well done in your efforts thus far. This brings Shogo Okie's story to a close. Ah, but it is, this is not the end. Far from it. In fact, this is where the story finally begins. That's so weird, so... He just... This is... Who? Zine... Was... Developed this. I know Square Enix were the ones who uh, published this. This feels like the same guy, the same guy who's behind the Danganronpa games. Because I believe he did that, um, that detective game that came out, what, last year? I think that was released for the Switch only, and then this year it's getting released on like all platforms. What's his name, Uchikoshi? I think. Regardless, we're going to be playing that. I'm not sure if I'm going to play... I want the newer version. If the newer version is for the Switch, we'll get that. If not, then uh, if the newer version is on the PS4, we'll get that. But either way, I want the physical copy of the game. While I'm at it, I think I will lower it. Sorry, that was my, me hitting the coffee mug. I will lower the game down to like 5.5 .5 now. Or maybe 6. Let's do 6. Okay. The routes of the three protagonists have now been unlocked. Harue Shikima, a woman who lost her son when he was kidnapped and murdered. Tatsuo Tsutsumi, the chief inspector of the first investigative division, who was looking into the death of an officer in the line of duty. Yako Sakazaki, a high school girl who wants to bring her friend back from the dead. A girl who died in a suspicious suicide. So two of them we did end up murking. Well, I say we, but I didn't do anything. It was all Shogo. Which, by the way, when he asked that question, because I don't know if I mentioned it yesterday, because I can't remember. Uh, when he asked how many people did Shogo kill, he meant that he meant that in a way like how many people did he kill that you didn't have a part of. So, the, whatever it said ZL, if you press that button, you would be, you yourself, the player, would be in, uh, directly responsible for those characters' deaths. Because I didn't do any of that, and it was all Shogo, it was all his doing. I had nothing to do with those deaths. So, I made sure of that. I was not, mm, -mm. no, 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 you're not putting that on my car. <laughs> Even though it's a video game, you're not putting that on me. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. Even the first one, the first one doesn't count as a death, I believe. Well, actually, I think the one, I think, I don't remember if he killed Yoko. Because I don't think I, well, shit, maybe I did. Maybe that counts. I don't know. But the max was five, and that was all. So, I believe. I can't remember. Each of them is burdened with circumstances that leave them no choice but to seek the right of resurrection. Following these three storylines, will reveal the full nature of all that is occurring. With that, please enjoy the continuation of this tale. I bid you adieu. Oh. 
Oh, interesting. So I can start off with her, but I wonder if I should start off with these two because there's their timelines begin sooner than hers. It's at the same point of Shogo's. Now I think I want to try those two first before I go into Haraway. Although, oh no, it's just highlighted by the names. Okay, I was about, I was about to be like, wait, why are their names like this? Okay. Let's start off with Tetsuo. Crime Scene Investigation, Tetsuo Tsutsumi. Tetsuo Tsutsumi, Chief Inspector of the Metropolit Metropolitan Police Department, First Investigative Division, is investigating the mysterious death of a fellow officer. He visits the scene of the incident, the former Yasuda Gardens, with his subordinate, Jun Erio. I, now, I know that there are some aspects of the game when it comes to some of the deaths that if I do certain storylines in a certain way, it will block those deaths out. So that's why I'm a little, uh, you know, I wonder who I should do and all this stuff. This is the curse of me watching a Let's Play before I get the game. But th honestly, if I didn't watch the Let's Play, I wouldn't have known about this game and I probably wouldn't have gotten this game. So you you, you, you win some, you lose some, you know, you, you, you go with the ebbs and the flows, you know, shit happens. Pretty much. We ball. Tatsuo Tsutsumi. So this is even before it all began. Former Yasuda Gardens. Hey boss, forensic is all done. The crime scene is clean. The other officers have all gone home. It's just us now. The park should be able to open back up tomorrow like nothing ever happened. I doubt it'll get many visitors after everything that's happened. You'd be surprised. Lots of people love that kind of thing. I bet they'll be lining up to get in. Occult stuff is really popular right now. Did you not know that, boss? Sounds stupid. Well, it's not exactly rooted in science, but... If ghosts really did exist, we could just ask them who the perp really, who the perp is. Somehow, I doubt it'd be that simple. Oh, but you know, I've heard that high school girls are really into this spirit board thing these days. Supposedly, you could call on spirits and talk to them while using a board with letters on it. Wouldn't that be something? You know what the wild thing is that I learned? Is that apparently, um, what company was it that... What company was it that has the copyright for a Ouija board and, and the fact that I even have to say that is really really dumb but I think it's Hasbro Hasbro has the copyright on well let me let me look at this up that way I can save editing beat from having to look up what it is let me see that is so stupid yeah it is Hasbro Hasbro owns the right to Ouija boards like are you kidding me you copyright the, the word Ouija it's so stupid I Companies will just copyright everything these days, man. I, I say so yeah, Parker Brothers and then Hasbro because Hasbro owns it now. It's so weird how they own the name and they produce these things. What the hell? It makes it it's so stupid. I companies will just oh my god. You could try it out yourself if you're so interested. Oh, wait, no. You could try it out yourself if you're so interested. Hey, that's not a bad idea. Let's give it a go sometime, boss. What now? Stop messing around. You really think we're gonna solve this case by moving a coin across a scrap of paper? Look at my vein in my head. Look how angry I am. Arr. Sounds like you know all about it. We've got to be open-minded. What if that's how police work is gonna be from now on? Don't make me laugh. Oh boy. Spirit board. Due to the occult craze, divination has become popular among young boys and girls. All one needs is a coin and a piece of paper with letters and numbers on it. Using these, all one has to do is ask a question of the called upon spirit and it will move the coin and answer. It is believed to be a tool that was adopted from Western spiritualism, spiritualism and molded by Japanese occult enthusiasts. Though it is considered a form of divination, the ritualistic nature of its usage can cause self-hypnosis or auto-suggestion, leading to hallucinations or symptoms similar to spirit possession. 
Many schools banned these uh, spirit boards after there were several cases of students sneaking into schools at night, in addition to stories of people having seizures when using the boards. That is insanely creepy. Listen up, Ariel. You can't go blaming the death of your buddy on something like the occult. Hmm. I don't care if it was ghosts or the occult or what. Whoever or whatever it was that did this, I'll get them. I promise you that. Well, you got the right attitude, but we don't even know if this is a murder yet. Bias is weak in our judgment. Get too fixated on one thing and you stop seeing everything else. Aye aye, boss. So, now that we've finished investigating the scene, let's review what we know. Hmm? Yeah. Now? It's getting late. I figured we'd head straight home at, from here. Me, 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 me. Come on. We got. Wait, is there a way to. There's a way to. Uh, I felt like that was like a great. <laughs> I feel like that's a great. Um, Let me see. Let me go into files. Because I guess it was in the file. Yeah. Is there a way to hide the screen? You can zoom in and out? What? You can zoom in and out? What do you mean? Oh, when using Joy-Con R. Zoom in, zoom out. What? Why did I forget about this? Select object, use curse, ZO. Auto on and off. Oh, I see. So obviously it's not, it's not now. It's when we we're able to do our own thing. But I thought there was a way to clear off the screen. I guess not. Well, that's okay. Come on. You've got to go over all the info we gathered. And what better place to do that than here at the scene of the crime, when we could soak up the atmosphere? Soak up the atmosphere? The hell is there to soak up? You must be really into the occult stuff if you get off on being in a place like this. Wait. You mean being somewhere like this doesn't get your blood pumping? No way. No, no. Don't turn this around on me. I'm not the weird one here. Cripes. Oh, fine. Let's get this over with. Aye, aye, boss. So, here, yeah? Ooh. 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 Oh, yeah. Huh. I didn't freaking know that. Well, I feel kind of dumb. The former Yasuda Gardens here in Yokohami, Ichome, were originally built as part of a daimyo's estate back in the Edo period. The park became city property a number of years ago and underwent extensive renovations. There's not a soul around this time at night. Quiet doesn't even begin to describe it. Ding dong, ding dong. This pond. They say it used to flow into the Sumida River, but the river became so polluted that they cut it off. Oh, right. I mean, I want to look, I want to see what the the Sumida River looks like now. So according to Google, an excerpt that they took from tohoku.repo.ni.ac.jp, the Sumida River was most heavily polluted during the early 1970s, when the post-war economic growth reached its culmination. However, the situation has improved since that time onwards, thanks to the dispersion of sewage and regulations on water control, water quality control. I'll probably post a picture up when I'm talking about that. Holy shit! Wow! Wow, that, oh my god. Nah. That's really, really bad. Holy shit. Well, you know what? I'm glad that they fixed that, because god, wow! That's this. Disgusting. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's really bad. That was... That was... That was terrible. I wouldn't be surprised if there were bodies in there. I won't even lie to you. This is where the victim was found. It's... Well, it's clean now. It almost, it almost feels like nothing happened here at all. But once an incident like this has to come to pass, or has come to pass, there's no going back. Not that knowing that is any consolation. True. Let's think. I've got a bad feeling about this case. 
and my gut is rarely wrong. I knew this would be a treacherous case from the moment we were dragged into it. Well, comes to the territory, I guess. June Erio. Oh, well, here, I'll, I'll talk normally during this one. No, it's him. June Erio, a detective in the Tokyo Metropolitan Police Department. First Investigative Division. His rank is Sergeant. This is his first time leading a case. It's like he's graduated from from rookie to newbie. He looks put together on the outside, but acts like a kid most of the time. Honestly. The force could use more people like him. Well, alright. So let's talk about the case. So, early in the morning yesterday, a staff member found the victim collapsed here in the park and called the police when they realized he was dead. Oh, oh, he drowned! While there were no obvious external wounds, so he, it was the... The Whispering Canal got him. The fact that he was a police officer and the evidence of a struggle means it's likely that this was a murder. It is the Whispering Canal, yeah? I just, I just, I just need to make sure. Yes, it is. Okay, just making sure. The Samina office sent it over to us since it involved the death of an officer and we were tasked with the investigation. What we need to do is figure out what happened and whether there was foul play involved. I think that about sums it up. Cool. About Tsutsumi. Hmm. Yeah, so anything else about the case? But, uh, boss? Yeah. Is this case really important enough to assign to someone from the investigative investigation division? I mean, a friend of mine died, so it's important to me, but... It's all up to the higher-ups. I'm sure they've got their reasons. Boss, you know something, don't you? It'll all become clear in time. Try not to worry about it too much. Thinking about it, the only thing we know for sure is the identity of the victim. Oh shit, did I drag grass into the house? I, I just realized this. I hope I fucking didn't. That means there must have been something special about him, right? Hmm. Maybe. Maybe he knew something he wasn't supposed to. Some kind of secret or something. Isn't that right? You're pretty sharp sometimes, you know that? If you picked up on that, you should be able to put the rest together yourself. Hmm. Interesting. Oh. Okay, I thought you were gonna say something about that, but okay. There's still more? Well, let's ask about the victim. The victim is Hajime Yoshimi of the Juvenile Division of the Sumida City Community Safety Bureau. 27 years old. Single. He mostly dealt with cases involving juveniles and education. His rank was Senior Police Officer. You knew him well, didn't you? What was he like? Oh, look how jacked he is, bro. Oh my gosh. Damn. Oh, he's got the... He's got the pompadour, bro. Oh. He looks so dope, bro. He looks so fucking cool. Yes, we were in the academy together. We still went out for drinks every together every month or two. He could be a little rowdy, but he was like a big brother to us all. He was kind. He cared about his friends. For better or worse... He wasn't the uptight type of cop. The man always showed empathy, and I heard he was popular with the locals for it. He treated each and every troubled kid he met with compassion. He had a great track record when it came to rehabilitation. Sounds like we lost a good one. Yes, we did. We truly did. I knew being a cop was dangerous. I knew something like this could happen, but... It's never easy when it happens for real. Now I know the feeling. He didn't seem to care much about climbing the ranks, but he was at the top of our class. Only problem was that he took on so much, he had the most unfinished paperwork too. I always felt we need an an, an I always felt we'd need an unusual guy like him to help us solve all our unusual cases. Hajime Yoshimi, Mayo Community Safety Officer, none for Chris Echo. Oh, interesting. Wait, what? Oh, I didn't even notice that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Curse Echo. 
Oh, Shoko doesn't even have his curse echo either. Whoa. Oh, shit. Okay. Well, we know he has a foot washing mansion. Because he told us. We don't even see Shoko. It's just because of. Oh, wait. No, it should have told us, no? I don't know. Interesting. It's just interesting how Yutaros is the only one that we still have the name of. I guess because he told us. But why don't we have Shogos? Ah. Maybe it'll be explained. Hajime was a police officer with the Sumida Community Safety Bureau. It was primarily responsible for juvenile and education services. Or cases. He held the rank of head patrol officer and entered the force at the same time as Jun Erio. Hajime was found dead under mysterious circumstances at the former Yasuda Gardens early in the morning yesterday. Once a rebellious gang member himself, Yoshimi turned his life around and used his own experiences to connect with the troubled youth as a police officer. While his appearance and demeanor suggested a man who was rough around the edges, he was a passionate, loyal, and caring man at heart, looked up to as a big brother by his peers. Yoshimi achieved stellar results at his work with juvenile cases, but his consistently sloppy paperwork and less informal attitude essentially doomed his career and had him writing formal apologies on the regular. He left beyond a fi fi uh, fiance who he had been dating since high school. So you said single, but he's he has a fiance. What? Don't worry, you're plenty usual yourself. Me? I was the most normal of my classmates. Besides, the real uh, weirdo among us quit the academy a long time ago. There was one even weirder than you. Hmm. Ajime was quite the bad boy in school. Apparently, he ended up with the police a lot. He said the officer in charge was good to him, helped him get back on track. The reason he wanted to become a cop was to pay his kindness forward. Said it was the first time he ever took his study seriously. That's a good story. Love that kind of thing. Makes me want to have a drink in his honor. Please don't make fun of my dead friend. Hey, I said in his honor. You should aspire to become the kind of cop people miss when they die in the field. You say that like it's a sure thing I'll die. <laughs> Besides, if I end up biting it, I'm sure you'll be the one who misses me most, boss. Ugh. Come on, don't be like that. You'll hurt morale. Well, I guess how much I'll miss you depends on how this investigation goes. I can already see it. Ario, no! Why'd you have to go and get yourself killed, you idiot? I have no idea what's going on in the head of yours. Yeah, that'll be a sight to see. I can't wait when I'm dead! You can't wait for your own death? Get it together, kid. <laughs> Sheesh, you really are something. Thank you? There's still more. As for the cause of death, we won't know until the autopsy is done. Excuse me. He was dripped out too, bro. Look at the sports jacket, the white undershirt, the blue jeans, and then the orange, the orange kicks to go with the... Bro! They, this dude was dripped out, bro. He's booling on Mars, bro. What is this? It's bullshit. <laughs> but what we've seen, though, it appeared to be some kind of acute heart failure. Oh. But since he had no record of chronic illness, and had no visible wounds, it's possible that poison or drugs could have been involved. Well, I mean, that's that's the case, you know, if you didn't know about the Seven Mysteries of Hancho, as you know. Dying in the middle of a park like that certainly seems suspicious. We found signs of a struggle at the scene. Wait, was that me or was that... Oh, that was Susumi. Dying in the middle of the park like that certainly seems suspicious. We found signs of a struggle at the scene as well as footprints belonging to an unidentified individual. You got people trying to identify those prints. If we could find out who they belong to, we might be able to figure this whole thing out. Yes, wouldn't that be nice if that were the end of it? The only things Hajime had on him were his badge and his wallet and his and his wallet in his pockets. So we can rule out a mugging. Though there probably aren't many people who think try who think to try mugging a cop as big as him. I've also heard that Hajime got into a fair few fights in his younger days. He started judo once he became an officer and rose up the ranks quickly. Sounds like the perp would have had to have been 
would have to have been pretty strong to take on Hajime. Or just use some magical bullshit, aka a curse. Time of death was around 11 p.m. two days ago, outside of the park's operating hours, of course. His body was found early in the morning yesterday. 11 p.m. the day before yesterday. What was Hajime doing out here at that time in the first place? That's the question, isn't it? The entrance to the park is closed after hours, but it's a small gate that'd be fairly easy for him to get through if he really wanted to. That would, of course, be breaking and entering, but what do you think, boss? I think someone called him here. He came here to hide something. No, I think he was called here. It's hard to imagine a cop like Hajime would trespass for no reason. It said it seems like someone else was here with them. Could they have called him here? Oh, that does seem likely. They must have been talking about something pretty sensitive to come here in the middle of the night. So Hajime met someone here to discuss something in secret. And then, they got into a fight? No, that wouldn't match the cause of death. There were no wounds on the body that would indicate a spontaneous scuffle. The perp must have planned something. Didn't you think it was meditated? That would mean... They called Hajime to the park with the attempt to kill him? Well, there is still the possibility that it was just some kind of accident. Maybe the perp tried to threaten Hajime and things went south from there. We should be able to get a clearer picture once we know exactly what killed him. Right. Okay, so that one's at least cleared up. Well, let's talk about me. By the way, I'm so glad you're back in the first division, boss. I've always admired your work. You were like a... I've always admired your work. You were like a god to me. I don't like... You were the whole reason I became a detective in the first place. Ah, yeah. About that. People have been saying that ever since you first entered the academy, but... Yes, that's because it's true. I couldn't believe you got transferred out of the first just as I was assigned to it. So getting to work a case like this now, just the two of us, is a dream come true. Happy as I am to hear that, uh... Well, how should I put it? What is it? If that's true, I'm not sure you've been showing me the proper amount of- <laughs> perfect amount of respect. Huh? But I do respect you. Don't tell me you're going now, boss. That's exactly what I'm talking about! When you run your mouth like that! It's getting late. You must be sleepy. Don't worry, boss. I'll make sure we get out of here soon. Bro, that is not respect! What is that? <laughs> that is belittling him! <laughs> your superior who is older than you. Significantly older. Yeah, yeah. I get it. A <laughs> punk bitch. <laughs> I've been wowed by your shrewd detective abilities all day today. Oh, really? Funny. I've been wowed by you too. That, okay. Well, let's talk about... Well, let's go back to the case. Well, it is our duty to get to the bottom of a suspicious death, especially one involving an officer. Oh. And then the victim? What about the victim's family? The Yoshimi family is from Kitasenju in Adachi City, but Hajime's parents died a long time ago. He lived there all alone, no siblings or anything. I went to his house a few times for drinks. I was surprised. It's this old, huge looking place. Like, you know, the kind of place that seems super haunted. And he lived there alone. It looked like the home of an old noble family. It was hard to imagine him being such a delinquent living in a house like that. That's their bi- There's that bias I was talking about. There's that bias I was talking about. If he's from an old family, I'm sure things were complicated. That's a bias too. He never talked about any of that, which even when we were drunk, so I don't know much about it. Hmm. Excuse me. Oh, one more thing. Yeah? Hajime was engaged. He'd been seeing his fiance ever since they were in high school. In school, over ten years, they just started talking about getting married. What was her name again? 
You showed me a picture once. She was a beautiful woman. That's so. Uh, how terrible for her. But she may know if there be anything going on with him lately. We should speak to her. Yeah, his fiance may have been his only confidant. I'm sure someone at the Sumida Police Department has already contacted her. I'll look into it tomorrow. Alright, cool. Ah. Hey, boss. I looked into the case that Hajime was running. Oh, great. That's the kind of stuff I want to know. What was Hajime working on the day he died? Well, according to his report for the day before, he had two cases involving juveniles. Alright, yo. We back at it with some more paranormal sight. The Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. It's been a little bit. Last time I played this, I ended up just kind of stopping the recording because I was getting like exhausted and honestly my my um what's the one I'm looking for um I was getting distracted that's what I'm trying to say I don't know what my, <clears throat> I don't know my voice did that but yeah I was getting distracted so I was checking on other things like my phone and stuff to kind of keep me motivated and stuff so we back at it another day and I apologize about the videos coming out very late um I just as always get distracted so we 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 trying to work on that you know what i'm saying anyway uh -huh. the first was the suicide of a high school girl who jumped off a building in kamizawa last week oh yeah i did hear about that the girl's name was michio shiraishi she was a second year student at komogata high school but it seems as though hajime had contact had had contact with her even before this incident Hmm, so she'd been troubled for some time. That's the thing. About a month ago, he happened to see her walking around town. She looked upset, so he struck up a conversation with her. Hold on, does this seem like it's off? Seems like it's delayed, give me one sec. Okay, I think it's good now? I don't know what that was, that was weird. Yeah, it's good, okay. He was sure there was something bothering her, but she wouldn't tell him what. Must have been trouble at home. That's what he thought, too. It seems he visited her home and spoke to her parents. But... They said there was no problem. That there was nothing else he could do. I mean, that's... They're gonna say that. Right? Because some parents don't want to admit the fact that... There is actually something going wrong at home. You know, because they think everything's all hunky-dory. And that the their child in question is just having a phase or something like that. I don't know. And now she's dead. Like, every parent, every household's different. Hmm. That is possible he could have prevented her suicide then. He must have been devastated. And that's why he was looking into this Michio Shiraishi again. He must have thought that something terrible had happened that, uh, that drove her to end her life. But ultimately, he never reported the findings of his investigation. I see. And you're thinking that it may have had something to do with his death. We'll have to find out what it is Hajime discovered. Right. Let's check with the Sumida Police Department about that tomorrow, too. Alright, what else you got? And what was the other case he was working? This one is also related to a Kamagata High student. A troublemaker named Hitome Okuda. She seems to be the leader of a group of kids who get up to no good. Hmm. Juvenile delinquency. Fun. She was pretty bad for a while. Multiple charges of destruction of property, assault, and battery. You name it. Hajime had been working with her for about six months, and she was finally starting to open up. Then, he met with the girl the day he died. Well, every school's got its problems. But I'm sure he'd be worried about how she'd get on with him, without him. Right. Just when she'd finally found an adult she could trust. She might act out without someone to help her get through this. We'll have to make sure the Sumida Community Safety Bureau does their job. What? Hmm? We can't rule out the possibility that meeting with this delinquent girl had something to do with his death. Then we'll have to interview her too. Wait. Oh, then we'll have to interview her too. Ah, yes, you're right. She may have been the last person to see him alive, after all. 
Max and Mita to introduce us tomorrow. So, who knows if they'll actually let us talk with her. That's what we hired you for. Lay a little boyish charm on them if they need convincing. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm sure they prefer me over a scary looking old man like you, boss. Watch it. I'm still your superior. You ought to act like you respect me at least. Oh, I thought I was. You were? Shit, is that just how your generation speaks? You really are a new breed. Eh, it's probably just me, actually. Ah, I don't think you could get away with that with other people. So anyways, what about that, boss? <laughs> were you even listening? We got, we got quite a bit to look into tomorrow. First, the two Komagata high school cases that Hajime was, held, was handling. And we need to speak with his fiance as well. I believe that's it for tomorrow. Okay, what's up with the updates? Notes on Hajime Yoshimi. Case notes regarding the death of Hajime Yoshimi, officer with the Sumida police. Summary. Body found at former Yasuda Gardens. Estimated time of death two days prior at approximately 11 a.m. Cause of death, acute heart failure, cause unknown. Signs of a struggle found at the scene, efforts to locate witnesses underway. Body discovered by groundskeeper, currently investigating the fiance of the deceased and two female students from Komagata High School that the deceased had contact with as persons of interest. Okay, let's talk about Tsutsumi. On the topic of family, what's yours like, boss? The hell is wrong with you? Crying into my personal life all of a sudden. It's just, I've never heard you talk about them or anything. Oh, are you single? Shut it. That's none of your business. Well, ever since I joined the force, I've been thinking. The department really pressures young officers to get married. I wonder why that is. You don't say anything like that, though. How should I know? I caved to the pressure myself and got married 20-some years ago. Huh. So then? God, you're relentless. She took our daughter and left four years ago. Thanks for reminding me. Oh. I'm sorry. I can't believe she'd give up a guy like you. Ugh. I was never home much. Too focused on work. I'd come home late, only to get called right back out again. Plus, being a cop is dangerous work. I don't blame her for getting fed up with it all. How sad. Especially when you're out here putting your life on the line. Oh, is that why you transferred out of the first? Hmm. It was already too late by then. You better be careful, Ario. You say that, but there's not much I can do, is there? That's the nature of our job. There aren't many who can really understand it. Not unless they're involved with police work themselves or related to someone who is. But wait, you have a daughter, boss. You really think I want to talk about her after all that? Have some sense. Come on, I promise I don't mean this the way it sounds, but how old is she? Bro, I... you know, I'm eating pretzels, by the way. Sorry, give me a quick sec to just cut this out real quick. <coughs> okay, sorry about that. Just need to finish my pretzels. And then end up washing it down with Shibuya Kaho's Guilty Pleasure from Gamer Subs. This is not an ad. I Why would Gamer Subs try to freaking use me as. <laughs> Bro, I'm like. I'm bottom tier content creator uh, at the moment. Why would Gamer Subs ever. Well, actually, I guess it's not true. I mean, it could happen one day. Who knows? Maybe if I could chill in Gamer Subs, maybe eventually they'll be like, hey, you want a code? And I'll be like, yes, please. Use code BEAT at checkout for 10% off. Don't actually. Don't actually. Because that's not a real code. At least that I know of. I didn't make the code. I don't have a creator code, so please don't try that at checkout. It's not going to work unless there's someone else. Also has the name beat in their name. Uh, and then they use that at checkout. But I don't know. I don't know. But don't, don't do it. Anyway. Jeez. You don't know when to quit, do you? At least try not to look so intrigued. She's, well, she's a bit rough around the edges. I think most men are intimidated by her. As I heard, she's leaving by herself and going to college. Wow, a college student. Men love an educated lady. Stop that. 
What kind of cop are you making baseless assumptions like that? She's living on her own, though. Huh. You must worry about her. Worry? I don't even know where she lives. Oh, so she hasn't told you. Probably because she knows you follow her around everywhere. I would not! I, I don't think. Come on now. We both know that's not true. Listen here. You may look like a mean old man, but you sure have a soft side. What? Is that supposed to be a compliment? I can't keep up with you. We're done talking about this. Are we though? Uh, I don't think so. No, oh, that reminds me. If we got married 20 years ago, it must have been right around the Nejima murder. You know your history. Yeah, that happened a year or two after our wedding. Wow. You were the one who arrested the killer, weren't you? We studied that case at the academy. I was only in elementary school at the time, but I still remember people talking about some dangerous criminal getting arrested. All that was just... Cracking the case, finding a guy, it was all just happenstance. I'd really rather not talk or think about it. It was a disturbing case. Did it not make your skin crawl when you learned about it at the academy? It did. We were all terrified. Sounds about right. No one could believe that such a mild-mannered man could have committed such a terrible murder. If we had overlooked one little thing, we may never have caught him, caught him at all. I think I remember hearing there was only one charge brought against him in the end. That's right. We didn't have the evidence. I knew there was no way such a meticulously planned crime could have been there first. But... We may have struck Fumichika Nejima in the cell, but it was no victory. He always had the upper hand. And all the damage he did to everyone involved. Especially the victim's classmates. It's already been 20 years, huh? God damn it. This is why I try not to think about it. I'm sorry. No, you're not. The Nejima Murders Overview. A notorious case from over two decades ago including the murder of a female high school student. It first came to the attention of the authorities when part of a human left hand was discovered floating in the Sumida River. Testing revealed it to belong to a missing female high school student. As it appeared to have been uh, severed deliberately, the police launched a murder investigation. A large-scale search of the river was organized, but the highly polluted state of the water made this impossible. Visibility was poor, the stench was intense, and the divers quickly fell ill. They succeeded in recovering only the victim's head and what appeared to be part of her leg before the search was called off. Oh wow. At the time of the incident, the Sumida River was as polluted as it had ever been. Neither fish nor shellfish could not survive in it eventually causing the annual fireworks festival to be called off indefinitely. Over the course of the search, the police discovered a number of unidentified human bones. This caused a stir among the public as several young, other young girls had, uh, had gone missing in recent years in the Tokyo area, and it was feared that they may have fallen victim to the same fate. Forensic technologies at the time, however, were not advanced enough to determine the identities of the deceased, and so the police were unable to open any inquiries. Due to the overwhelming lack of circumstantial evidence, the investigation ground to a halt until a, a, hither, a hitherto, I don't know what that means. Where's my phone? I want to know what this means. Hitherto? Or hitherto? I don't, I don't. Man, this sucks. I was trying so hard to keep the phone away from me so that I wouldn't have to get distracted by it. But now I need it because I don't know what the hell this means. Hither two. See, okay. See, so what the fuck just happened? I got distracted again, which is what I was avoiding by putting the phone away. <sighs> this is why I just need to lock in, bro. I need to. You know how iPhones have that little thing now where you can put it into like game time? I need to do that so I can lock in. Hate this. Let's learn how to say it together. If it get away, you volume. Hither two. Hither to. Hither to. Until now or until the point in time under discussion, there is a need to replace what has hitherto been a haphazard method of payment. Previously, formerly, earlier. Oh, I see. Okay. That makes sense. So, going back to the sentence that we were 
sitting here for like 10 minutes waiting for me to get off my phone. Due to the overwhelming lack of circumstantial evidence, the investigation ground to a halt until a previously unrelated individual came to its attention, or hitherto. You know, previously, same thing. During a questioning about a separate incident, Umechika Nejima, a 36-year-old shop owner with no relation to the victim, divulged details about her that had never been released to the general public. An investigation into his background was conducted, leading to his arrest. Najima testified that he had snatched the victim from the street and confined her in the underground storeroom of his shop, which also served as his living quarters. He chose her for no apparent reason, but simply decided she was an opportune target on seeing her walk alone at night. That alone is scary. I think I'm gonna... Well, well I'll, 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 I think I'm gonna um, lower the volume in the settings here. Not on OBS, but on the actual game. Uh, no, actually, no. Well, yeah, 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 we'll do that. After keeping her locked up for several days, he restrained her, sewed her mouth shut, and severed her fingers and toes with a box cutter while she was still conscious. As she screamed silently behind her sealed lips, he proceeded to her wrists, her ankles, her elbows, and her knees, working his way inward slowly and methodically. Oh, God. His victim constantly wavered in and out of consciousness. Her ordeal continued until she died of blood loss. That is so fuck. Oh. God, man. Nejima dismembered the rest of her body and disposed of it behind his home in the Sumida River before cleaning his storeroom and returning to his everyday routine as if nothing had happened. I don't understand how you could... Bro, like, oh my god. He used a box cutter to cut off her fingers and her toes while she was still conscious. And she screamed and cried because obviously that shit hurts. And then he slit her wrists, her ankles, her elbows, and her knees. Ah, God, dude. Ugh. I hate that so much. Once apprehended, Nejima readily divulged the details, sorry, of the murder, but was less willing to explain his motive. When asked, he would only break down in tears saying, I don't know what came over me. I know it was wrong. In the end, the police could extract nothing more from him than expressions of remorse. Although the efficiency of his methods strongly suggested that he had committed several crimes in the past, no cooperating evidence ever came to light. Najima was sentenced to life in prison at his first hearing. The sentence was imposed with no appeal from the defendant. Bro, that is so fucked. Oh my god. I think these should be good, yeah. SFX, sound effects, uh, sound effects 8. Yeah, because it, it's going to overtake my voice, man. I could put it down at 6, but even so, if I ever record again at night, it's best for me to, you know, so that you guys can still hear me properly. Even though I just in the mic settings, sometimes when I talk in a lower tone, the game volume can still overtake my voice. So it's, it's best to do this about the occult. I actually, you know what? I can even increase it a bit in Elgato, I think. So let's do 5.5. About the occult. So, all this occult stuff. Have you heard about it, boss? What are you talking about? This Rider Resurrection thing that everyone's talking about. No, not you two. I've been hearing about that shit everywhere. Oh, you have? That's surprising. Who cares what people are talking about? It's got nothing to do with our job. But don't you think the occult stuff with this case feels... I don't know, realer somehow? The whole thing started right here in Hanjo, in Sumida City. So I thought that maybe... Cut it out. Nothing good can come of getting involved with a right of whatever that record of fates. Sounds like you know all about it. Boss, are you secretly into the occult? Stop that! Seriously, this isn't a joke. I get why you'd be intrigued by something called the right of resurrection after a buddy of yours died, but... Bringing the dead back to life. That's the stuff of fantasy. It's not real. So don't go hoping for miracles. Got it? Well, boss, I think that about does it. Right. Let's call it for tonight. I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, God, what is that? Huh? Boss? What's wrong? Don't tell me you're going to see now. Actually, you know what? I'm sorry. Fuck all that. Then this bitch up.
Turn this bitch up. Turn this bitch up. And then we, uh... That didn't hit as hard as I wanted it to. I freaking debuffed myself. With bullshit. Which means I debuffed you guys. I'm sorry. You guys didn't get the full intensity of the scare that I should have. This is true. Do not be fooled. This is a true lie. It is no rumor. Believe me. What is the truth? Damn it! It was that case all along. Boss? What is it? Is there something over there? Ah! Such deep sorrow. Resentful memories in my mind. Those who deceive with falsehoods are not, not true. You will be hunger forever in eternal darkness. Kill them. Here we go again. Kill them. Those who spread lies. Kill them all. You have acquired the power of the cursed stone, the evergreen beach. You can use it to kill those who intentionally try to mislead you. Press the use curse button when someone lies to you. The evergreen beach. An enduring superstition. Once upon a time in North Okurabashi, a beautiful beech tree stood in the garden of Lord Shinden's residence, now known as the former Yasuda Gardens. It was so impressive that the house became known among the people as the beach residence. Somehow, no one had ever seen a single leaf fall from the tree. As rumors spread of the eternally green tree, it became known as the evergreen... So, oh, whoa, 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 hello. Oh, for frick's sake. No! Where is it, where is it, where is it? Sorry, I freaking finger... Finger decided to press L for our, whatever reason. That was great. Uh, it became known as the evergreen beach. However, this particular species of tree was actually an evergreen. So the lack of falling leaves was nothing out of the ordinary. This said led people to say that the strangest part of this legend is the fact that it even became a legend at all, which I already read apparently. A cursed power kills by hanging one who tries to mislead the curse bearer with false statements. Oh, a resentful memory. He deceived us with his so-called right of resurrection. The man who tricked the people with his false dark arts swings from a rope. They thought the man had escaped the previous night, but oddly enough, he was found hanging in the garden of the Damio's mansion that morning. The man, a local named Jinkichi, was known for his kind temperament and skill in crafting Netsuke clasps. While his life wasn't always easy, he was optimistic, the type to smile through whatever life threw at him. Water. He was the kind of man who would take care of those who didn't have anyone else to rely on. The prosperity that the Ukiyo-e boom brought must have been what fanned the flames of his greed. The old craftsman was found in a miserable uh, Let me try it again. The old craftsman was found in a miserable state as if sentenced to some cruel fate. Perhaps he'd ended his own life unable to bear the weight of his crime. But dead men tell no tales, and the people thought of him as a bad man even in death. He hung there for days, so his neck stretched horrifically. A visage of pain still etched on his face. It was clear he must have struggled greatly as he died. His flesh marked with dark scars with a rope wrapped around his whole body. The beech, uh, the beech tree's leaves do not fall. And neither did the man's body hanging from it. Nor the tears. As the mansion's owner was not at home. Another unfortunate event. The people held their tongues, fearing divine punishment, but the rumors persisted nonetheless. Your tears so full. Urgh! A murderous impulse seeps into my soul like thick black tar. Here we go. Now, Carol. Can you hear it, curse bearer? You so strongly desires the rights. Kill them. What do we need to write for? Wasn't he talking about how he didn't care about that mumbo jumbo bullshit? Boss! 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 What's the matter? Don't tell me you really want C now. One of these days you're gonna get punched in the face, kid. Sorry. Yeah, I'm fine. Out of my way! Ariel. Yes? I have some bad news. Oh no, your senility is kicking in, isn't it, bro? Oh my... <laughs> no! We got a bit of trouble on our hands. Looks like we'll be working some overtime. 
We're not going home tonight. Huh? What are you talking about? Bitch, bop, 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 bop. Oh. Oh, never mind. Oh, okay. Okay, let's go to Yako. Because I kind of want to get them all around the same boat, if that makes sense. Let's go to Yako. Speed report. Yako Sakazaki searches for the right of resurrection, hoping to revive her friend who jumped to her death. To get the information she needs, she meets with her classmate Mio Kurosusu in their classroom at night midnight to attempt using a spirit board. How's it go? Yako Sakazaki. 12 a.m. Komogara High School. I'm sure doing it this way might aggravate some people, might also mess with your brains a bit. Hell, it might even mess with mine, but something about getting them all down the same length makes sense to me. And there's going to be a point in time I know that one of the stories are going to cut off until I do the other ones anyway. But... I don't know. I just It just feels right doing this. That should be everything. Okay, let's start. Ready for this, Yako? Oh, I'm not ready. But what would even happen if you did this? Um, sorry, give me a second. It's okay. It's normal to be nervous your first time. There's nothing to be scared of, I promise. Thanks. I'm ready. High school student, Yako Sakazaki. Oh my gosh, your interest. Yako is a student in class 2C at Komagata High School, and able to comprehend why her childhood friend and classmate Michio Siraishi committed suicide. She attempted to investigate the incident herself. However, she was unable to make any progress and, feeling desperate, invited transfer student Mio Kurosusu to join in, join her in performing a spirit board ritual, which is going to be fantastic. That's sarcasm. It's not going to be. Born and raised in Honjo, Sumida City, Yako's family has owned and operated the beloved candy shop Sonoya since its establishment in the early Showa era. Despite her modest appearance, Yako is a cheerful and vivacious young, lady, young woman with a sense of duty and compassion so strong that she is easily moved to tears. Yeah, me too. She is also a bit quick-tempered and quarrelsome. How is prepared to stand up against those who harm her family or friends? It is possible, however, that this readiness to fight is more driven by an innate love of chaos. Oh. Mood. Yako's winning streak against arrogant boys and scraps since she was a child remains unbroken and is a source of consider considerable stress for her mother. You gotta understand, man. Mama's gonna understand, bro. Her mom. Her being able to stand up for against other people and beat the shit out of them is good. You don't need no protection. She is the protection. If you feel me. Alright, let's start. This is gonna suck. This is a spirit board. This is how we'll be communicating. First, we'll both put a finger on the 10 yen coin that's on the board. I don't... I don't wanna do... I don't wanna do this, but I gotta do it, so I understand. Oh, interesting. Okay. Oh, they're really making this interactive. Huh. Like this? Just like that. Relax your finger as much as you can. Now, for the chat. Repeat what I say, okay? Oh, Spectre of the Spirit Board. Please visit us. Your turn. Scepter of the Spirit Board, Spectre of the Spirit Board, Spirit of the Spectre Board. What happens if we get it wrong? Spectre of the Spirit Board, Spectre of the Spirit Board, Spectre of the Spirit Horde. Please come this way, please come on over, please come to me, please visit us. Scepter of the Spirit Board, wait don't. No. Scepter of the Spirit Board, Spectre of the Spirit Horde, please come on over. <laughs> You're a little off. Huh? Just relax, I'll say it again. Oh, Spectre. Spectre of the- I was about to say Scepter. Spirit, Spectre of the Spirit Board, please visit us. Your turn. 
Okay, Spectre to Spirit Board. Spectre to Spirit Board. Please visit us. Spectre to Spirit Board, Spectre to Spirit Board, please visit us. Good. Please tell us if you are there. Oh. Whoa, I've really moved. Looks like we succeeded in a summoning. We can ask questions now. Right. Questions. Start with a question you know the answer to and see the response. Then, when you know your questions are being answered truthfully, you ask what you really want to know. Okay, I'll start with something simple. What's my name? <laughs> oh, there it is, eh? Is it really you? What is this place? What is it going What is my name? Snoop Dogg is... Oh... I think I should know the answer to this. Hello, Spectre the Spirit Board. What's my name? Huh? What's the matter? How strange. No. Huh? It told me no? Ah, I bet it means it doesn't know. It may be the Spectre of the Spirit Board, but it doesn't know everything. Is this spirit really the real deal? Yes. <laughs> it's fine. I feel like it's giving me attitude. Yes, it is. Okay, um... What is this girl's name? Fine. What is the name of the girl across from me? Wait, it knows her name? Huh. Mio, that's right. Ah, uh, that's not fair. It knows your name, Mio. You even use that weird character you use to spell your name. How flattering. Mio Kurosusu. Mio transferred to Class 2C at Komagata High School about two months ago. Although she is an extremely mild-mannered young woman, she exudes a, some off, a somewhat off-putting dark aura, which makes it difficult for her to form friendships. Mio has, however, found a friend in her classmate, Yako Sakazaki, and has begun opening up to her little by little. The truth of the matter is that Mio is the apprentice of a famous psychic. Possessing exceptional spirit sense, she takes on this troublesome task of surreptitious surreptitiously handling spiritual disturbances that break out in schools across Tokyo before they become a problem. She transfers schools frequently as a result and thus has trouble making human friends. Human. Human! Mio has already solved an incident at Komagata High School involving a female student possessed by a spirit. Although she takes effort to hide her spirit sense, many develop an impression that Mio has a deep knowledge of the occult and the paranormal upon first meeting her, leading to her to be anxious that her secrets have been exposed. The most common comment she receives is that she seems to get along well with crows and black cats. Mm. Oh my gosh, my knee. Oh my gosh, my phone. Oh my, wow, my knee actually. Okay. Ah, okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. I bet even the teachers get it wrong all the time. Wow. Okay. My knee is like gone. I guess these paranormal beings just tend to take a liking to you. Huh. I don't know how I should feel about that. Motherfucker, what is my name? I'll ask it again. What is my name? No. <laughs> I didn't even hesitate this time. <sighs> Fuck her. Alright. Is it really you? Oh, Spectre of the Spirit Board. Are you truly the Spectre of the Spirit Board? No. Huh? I said no. Is it lying? Not quite. The Spectre of the Spirit Board is just a temporary name we call them when using the board. We're actually calling a spirit with a strong tie to this place, or one of the people participating. In other words, a spirit that just happened to be nearby just felt like answering. Oh. They didn't really think of themselves as the specter of the spirit board. No. Oh. Really? Huh. Feels like some of the mystique has disappeared. you mind if I still call you the specter of the spirit board? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, thanks. Always good to remember to say please and thank you. 
Where am I? No, Spectre the Spirit Board. Where are we? The double tap. It's like it went down to the O, and I was like, "Wait, oh, <laughs> I don't know." It was an hesitation, bro. It was like, ah, I could play football. I don't know. High school. High school. That's right. You just don't seem to be very precise. All right, it's time to try asking serious questions. Yeah. Who the fuck does Mio have a crush on? Tell me. Victor to spear poor. What is the name of the boy Mio has a crush on? Hey! You're not gonna ask it that kind of question. Doesn't everyone ask this kind of question with spear boards? Besides, I'm curious. No, no, no. Let's not do this. No. Huh. Is it? No. Guess that must mean you don't have a crush on anyone. <sighs> yeah, that's it. No, it's correct. Let's move on. Ah! Or maybe... I'll inspect the spirit board. Do you mean the boy isn't in our class? Yes. <gasps> wow! Hey, stop that! Don't make me exercise you! If that is the case, then... I'll inspect the spirit board. Is it a teacher at our school? Oh, thank goodness. Aw, no good, huh? Phew! Yako, cut it out already! We made the effort to sneak in at night. We shouldn't waste time with these questions. You got a point. I think the voices are switched. Michio's calls the death. Okay, here I go. I'll be serious now. Yes, please. Hello, Spectre to Spirit Board. Did Michio... Did Michio Siraishi in our class? Who died by committing suicide by jumping one week ago. Oh, should I be... censoring... that word? Oh, I should, shouldn't I? Oh, I forgot about that. I forgot... I completely forgot about YouTube's TOS thing. Uh, that's awkward because I've been saying it for this past, so I forgot about that. I mean, to be fair, it is what it is. I really don't give a damn. Um, I don't give a damn. I'm not making money off of this anyway. It is what it is. If I was, then sure, yeah, I would care. So, okay, for now on, I just won't say it. Really commit Minecraft? I'll just know. I don't know if I should say that. No, I'll say that, because you guys get the reference, right? Because everyone, whenever they say something like, like in-game or in Minecraft. Did they come in Minecraft? Oh. <gasps> so it really wasn't. I'm not surprised. I never believed it from the start. Now the important part. Yeah. Oh, she was cute. Michiro Siraishi. Michio was a second year student at Komagata High School. I really love the art style of this game, by the way. All the characters look really good. She was found deceased one week ago in a back alley of off South Varigasui Street. Her entire body broken and severely contorted. Damn, probably from the fall, no? Police determined that Michio committed Minecraft. Now I can't use that word. Did I say last breath? Sure. I don't know. Police determined that Michio committed last breath by jumping off of a near off jumping from a nearby apartment building. As there was no last breath note, the police based their conclusion on interviews with Michio's peers. Michio was a honor student with a good hand on her shoulders and consistently good excellent grades, making her a favorite among the teachers. Although she appeared somewhat reserved, she had a positive outlook on life and a courageous spirit. Michio and Yako formed a long lasting friendship during childhood. With Yako's unbending, uncompromising attitude deeply influencing Michio. However, beneath her strong exterior, Michio had been pushing herself too hard and keeping her emotions bottled up to the point that they risk overflowing. Following her father's death three years ago and moving to a new house, Michio began avoiding Yako. Although the two remained in the same area of town and attended the same high school, they gradually grew further apart. Yako, worried her Yako herself worried for a childhood friend 
but incapable of wading into complexities of Michio's home life, kept her distance. The days passed, and although Michio longed, no, and though Michio longed to confess everything to Yako, the moment to do so never came. Michio carried an old talisman, a memento of her father, with her at all times. Okay, then what was her cause of death? I was back there at the spirit board. Did Michio Shiraichi die in an accident? Oh. It said yes. So it was an accident and not the last breath. Michio. Then, did she slip and fall from that apartment building? No. Huh. She didn't? What do you mean? Michio didn't die falling from the apartment building? Oh. No way. If that were true, then why was she lying on the ground like that in the back alley of the apartment building? It was an accident, but not a fall? I'll speak to the spirit board. What happened to Michio on that day? No say. Seems like it doesn't know the details. Where is the Rider's Resurrection? And how about... I'll speak to the spirit board. We want to use that Rider of Resurrection. To bring Michio back to life. Do you know where the Rite of Resurrection is? I wonder. Oh. Okay, that I was I, I won't lie. I was that was kind of fading a bit. I was getting tired. And that kind of woke me up a bit. Huh? <laughs> yep, okay. See I'm glad I turned it off. Because yeah, now that that really woke me up. Huh? What what is this? Stop! I'm scared of Mio! Calm down! You can't let go before it's over! Stop! Can you hear it? The precision! Please stop it hurts! Ah! Such, such deep sorrow! There's a memory is flowing into my mind! The fool's procession, those who hear it, they shall fall to the deeps of hell! Kill them! Kill them! Those who hear the sound! Kill them all! You have acquired the power of the curse stone, the fool's possession. You can use it to kill those who hear the sound produced by the curse echo for more than 30 seconds. The effect will be negated if you are seen in that time. Press the use curse button to produce the sound. Oh my gosh, fool's procession. A curse power. Kills by fatal fall. One who hears its music for 30 seconds without seeing the curse bear. Is up for memory. Omio stood atop the tall festival tower. There's her time to shine. She was ecstatic. She had a palm sh palm from like this. Like she burned me. It had been years since she joined the troop, but she had yet to enjoy her day in the spotlight. She wasn't particularly pretty, nor was she all that talented. Oh. It's kind of rude. As a gossip and a loud mouth, she wasn't well liked by her peers. That's really weird. Uh, uh, rude. Some of the other girls thought of her as a teacher's pet and bullied her. That is fucked up. I don't care about them, she thought. I'll use this chance to make something of myself. Everything was perfect. She wore a beautiful kimono and an okame mask over her face. The stage was set. The accompaniment began. She danced with everything she had. Applause raised down from the crowd. Her, uh, her breathing hastened with excitement. Got to catch my breath. That's strange. I can't take my mask off. The smell of glue assaulted her nostrils. So that's how it is. I knew it was too good to be true. Her screams were drowned out by the music as she squirmed and struggled. Omeo is giving it her all today. We have to keep up. The crowd livened even more. No! No, please! Someone help me! She fell from the tower, writhing in pain as she begged those around her for help. The music stopped in time with Omio's heart. Oh, that's messed up. Ugh! A murderous impulse seeps into my soul like thick black tar. Now, Carol. Can you hear me, curse bearer? You who so strongly desires the right. Kill them.
Oh, and that's it for that one. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do not dreams real quick for how do I, and then I think we're going to call it then because I am getting very tired. Um, we'll see about doing, no, no, we'll, we'll do it tomorrow after the gym. We'll do more tomorrow and continue from here. But we're going to do not dreams. I want to get all of them started. So not dreams, Harue Shigima. When the son of Harue Shigima was kidnapped, a botched investigation by the police resulted, excuse me, in the child's murder. When they, one year later, Harue has hired a, a private investigator to help resolve the unsettled case. Late at night, while speaking to the detective at her home, something strange suddenly happens, or appears. Oh, interesting. May those who mock fires fuel perish in vain flame. Kill them. Kill them! The flame bearers. Kill them all. Wait, so we we just immediately started with this. You have acquired the power of the cursed stone, the haunting clappers. You can use it to kill those with fire or a fire starting device on their person. Ah And that's why we had to get rid of the lighter. Because like I said, but I, I don't even know what I said last time, but like I guess because it could catch on fire because it's a fire starting device, right? So I don't know. I don't know if maybe what I said made sense. Probably not, but this this explains it. Press the use curse button to set your target alight. Now, why did we start off with this? Like no interrupt, no no like introduction. Just immediately get this power, which is the haunted clappers. A curse power. Kills by burning one who is in possession of fire or a fire starting device. Is done from memory. Red, red, red. Everything is dyed crimson. My home is burning to the ground. It's so, it's hot. So, so hot. I must call for help, but I cannot speak. My throat must be burned up from the smoke. No, I think I'm already on fire. That's right. I'll just use the clappers. Clack, clack. Is anybody there? Clack, clack. Why is no one coming? I'm going to burn to death. How did it come to this? Oh, right. Her. It must be the work of that vixen who appeared suddenly and enchanted my lord. That witch. Those hauntingly cold eyes had my lord dancing in the palm of her hand. Perhaps I was also taken in by her. How many innocent people did I lure in under orders? This must be karma. The sound of a heavy bell. It feels like my head will split, or split open. Ah, oh, right. The evening bell. That must be why nobody can hear the sound of my clappers. I've got to do it louder. Clack, clack. And then he died that day. A murderous impulse seeps into my soul like thick black tar. Now. Kill. Can you hear it, curse bearer? You, who so strongly desires the right. Kill them. You know it would be crazy if it just ended after that? But it obviously it won't. How do I Shigia? Uh Shigima, I should say. Shigima Mansion Reception Room. Or Shijima. Shijima. Shigima? Shijima. She okay. Ow. Ravioli, ravioli, find me the formulaoli. Oh, the phone you already. So, Sigma, 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 Sigma. One more time. Unlock the phone. Sigma, Sigma. Sigma is the English one. Sigma, 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 or Sigma. Back with me, ma'am. Can't say I understand what just happened. But it certainly seems to have put you in a good mood. This might be the first time I've ever seen you really smile. Sweet dreams. She looks so out of it. Housewife Harue Shigema. Shigema. Harue Shigema. Harue Shigema. Harue is a housewife who resides in a manor near Shumoku Bridge. Her 11-year-old son, son, Suichi, was kidnapped and murdered about a year ago. Suichi. The death was a result of a mistake on the part of the detective assigned to the case. A mistake which enraged the kidnapper 
and had him cut off all contact with the police, leaving no room for investigation. The incident was covered up, and Suichi's killer remains at large, leading the ag aggrieved Harue to call on the services of private investigator Victor Kai to cover the truth. The Shigima family, Shigima family came from a line of samurai who built the residence in Honjo during the Edo period. They assumed important positions in the police force following the Meiji Revo uh, Revolution, thereby protecting their family's elevated status. Even today, many in the Shijima line work as police bureaucrats and senior police officers. Haruwe's father sits in the upper ech echelons. Echelon. He's so high, upper echelon of the National Police Agency, and her husband, adopted into the Shijima clan through an arranged marriage, is also a highly respected agency official. However, as her family prioritizes work above all else, it wasn't long before Haruwe's marriage grew cold. Though she wants for nothing, wait, though she wants for nothing, she is isolated from her neighbors and withdrawn from society. Seeing her son grown to a young man gave Haruwe a purpose in life, but it was cut short by the kidnapping incident. Following the incident, Haruwe spent many days in a deep depression, if understandable, breaking into sudden fits of shouting and wandering around in the middle of the night. I can't say I've done that before. Her cheerful, loving disposition faded away, and she took to making snide remarks at her husband, which only further soured their relationship. A few months ago, Haruwe's husband was transferred to another work area for work, and now rarely returns home, with Haruwe uh, left to live in a large, empty mansion alone. As a housekeeper who has been with the family for a long time, wait, wait, as a housekeeper who has been with the family for a long time, comes in to take care of all the housework, Haruwe has nothing but time on her hands. I don't know if that made sense. I don't, for some reason, my brain could not comprehend that sentence. And I really don't know why. No. Not dreams. Sounds like something I might want to hear about. Well, then before we do that, let's get a... Let's go ahead and take a look around. Hmm? What is that? Well, I'll be damned. Is that what I think it is? Goodness, you made me jump. It's just a silly little sticker. Oh. I thought it was Victor. It's just a silly little sticker my son got from somewhere or another. He put it up just before... Well, you know what happened. I still can't bring myself to take it down. Let me take a closer look. I knew it! It's Head Henjo from way back in set number one. This is a real collector's item. Excuse me? Don't tell me you never heard of the Mockingbirds. The what? They're the hottest new craze. Cute little birds dressed up like rough and tumble delinquents. I've never heard of them. But it certainly seems to have mattered to you. The best part is... Nobody knows who made them. They just started showing up around town, and soon enough, they'd won everybody's hearts. The story goes that they've ma they're made by some anonymous artist who covertly leads them behind in specific locations. So is this the first instance of this in the game so far? No one knows when or where they'll show up next. They're basically an urban legend of sorts. To think that one would turn up here of all places. This is a good sign, I'm sure of it. Oh, well that's nice. Mockingbird number one discovered. There's 20. Okay. These popular bird mascot stickers seem to pop up everywhere. Nobody knows who the legendary artist is behind these quirky birds, but they quickly became popular for their certain surreal yet oddly cute designs. Be in the right place at the right time in Honjo, and you might just be able to find all 20 of them scattered around. Legend has it collecting them all will bring good luck. Head Hencho, a person that... Oh! That's cool that they give you hints about where to look for the stuff. TV! A color television. Father bought one as soon as it hit the market. Ducks have the latest gadgets. Oh, wait. Father bought one as soon as it hit the market. He likes to have the latest gadgets. Unlike the latest models, there is no remote control. We've had it for a long time. Back when it was new, we all gathered around it and marveled at it as a family. Oh, I'm sorry. But with father and my husband being away too often, it quickly fell into disuse. Clock. 
The swinging of the pendulum echoes through the room. It feels livelier than usual for Richter here. Usually it's just me. Motherfucker, big three. Nigga, it's just me, big me. Bah! Effects machine. It can send images to other places along the telephone network. I don't really know how it works. Most houses don't have one. I rarely found a use for it. An arrangement of flowers. We, we bring in someone to do it. I don't even know what the call, flowers are called. An old hanging scroll. I don't know who painted it. It's been hanging here since before I was born. Stereo. A stereo unit with separated speakers designed for home use. My husband insisted on buying one, even though he isn't one to listen to music often. You know what? I'm really do. Ooh. The lights. Follow the lights. The chandelier is the only thing in here that's my choice. It's my favorite part of the room. Really? Out of everything, that's the only thing you did? Wow. That kind of sucked. But okay, I did say I was going to go ahead and finish this, but honestly, I can, I'm i already feeling myself. I can't even speak. That's how bad it is. I'm feeling myself fade. So maybe it's... Maybe I should just cut it off here. Because I honestly didn't get that much sleep anyway. I had to get up early to go ahead and get my body fat percentage composition and all that stuff taken care of at the gym, and then I worked out too, and I did not give myself enough sleep, so I'm literally falling, falling, falling. It, like, it feels like I'm about to, like, fall out of consciousness real quick for, like, five minutes and then wake up again, so instead of doing that, how about I just go ahead and end it for now? This this episode and last episode will be combined in one episode, and then uh, tomorrow, I'll go ahead and continue from from here. That we can, you know, get started with the next, with the rest of her, and then go on to whoever's next, and all that stuff, and try to figure out what the hell's going on in Hanjo. Huh? Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys are enjoying. Sorry again for the late uploads. Um, I'm just very, very easily distracted, and school's starting up soon too, so I'm a bit anxious for that. But you know, we, we're gonna make it do what it do. Also, football season's back too. Man, I just got asked to join a league again, and oh my gosh, I'm so happy. I'm so ready. I'm so ready. Thank you all for watching once again, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. We are